Thank you for joining this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, let's explore the headlines first. India UAE signed bilateral investment treaty during the Prime Minister of India's visit. Odisha has declared Gupteshwar Forest in Koraput district as its fourth biodiversity heritage site. Ministry of Panchayati Raj launched Smart Gram Panchayat, revolution towards digitization of Gram Panchayat pilot project. Department of Land Resources, Ministry of Rural Development has launched the Land Records Management Initiatives in Assam. Standing Committee on Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution submits report on transforming fair price shops. Parliamentary Committee has submitted a report on scheme for creation or expansion of food processing and preservation capacities. Starting with the first news of the day. India, UAE signed bilateral investment treaty during Prime Minister of India's visit. The bilateral investment treaties between two countries aims to promote and protect foreign private investments in each other's territories. The United Arab Emirates has become the country with which India has signed both Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement or CEPA and BIT. Also, earlier India has signed CEPA with Japan and South Korea and BIT with Belarus. CEPA covers the negotiation on trade and services and investment and other areas of economic partnership like intellectual property rights. Further, let us also talk about the key agreements in the treaty. The Intergovernmental Framework Agreement has been made concerning cooperation for empowerment and operation of India Middle East Europe or IMEC Economic Corridor. The IMEC calls for a sea land connectivity project linking India with West Asia and Europe. NMOU on Development of National Maritime Heritage Complex or NMHC has been signed to build Maritime Heritage Complex at Lothal, Gujarat. Moreover, agreement on interlinking of instant payment platforms such as UPI India and ANI UAE and domestic debit or credit cards Rupay in India with G1 in UAE. This agreement will further facilitate seamless cross-border transactions and enhance universal acceptance of Rupay across UAE. Lastly, the establishment of cooperation protocol between National Library and Archives of UAE and National Archives of India for restoration and preservation of archive material. Moving on, let us talk about the India-UAE relations. Economically, UAE is India's second largest export destination and third largest trading partner with total trade standing at $85 billion. In the energy sector, recently, both countries have signed long-term contract for supply of LNG. Lastly, in the defence sector, both the countries conduct joint military exercises that is Desert Cyclone. Moving on to the next news. Orissa has declared Gupteshwar Forest in Koraput district as its fourth biodiversity heritage site. After Mandasaru in Kandhamala district, Mahindragiri in Gajapati district and Gandhamardhan in Bargar and Bolangir districts, Gupteshwar has also been declared as Biodiversity Heritage Site. Let's start by first discussing about Gupteshwar Forest. It is located adjacent to Gupteshwar Shiva Temple, which is a natural limestone cave shrine. It holds sacred groves revered by the local community for generations and have rich biodiversity. This forest serves as a home to key faunal species like Magar Crocodile, Kangar Valley Rock Geeko and Avi Fauna such as Common Hill Mana, White Bellied Woodpecker and Banded Bay Cuckoo. If we talk about the key floral species, then this forest has threatened medicinal plants such as the Indian trumpet tree, Indian snake root, kumbi gum tree and garlic pear tree. Now let's discuss and know about the biodiversity heritage sites. These are unique ecosystems having rich biodiversity consisting of some specific components. These include richness of wild domesticated species or intraspecified categories, high endemism that is restricted in geographical distribution to an area or region. Presence of rare and threatened species, keystone species, species of evolutionary significance, wild ancestors of domestic or cultivated species or their varieties, and past preeminence of biological components represented by fossil beds and having significant cultural, ethical, or aesthetic values, among others. Under Section 37 of Biological Diversity Act 2002, State government in consultation with local bodies may notify areas of biodiversity importance as biodiversity heritage site. Also, the state government in consultation with the central government may frame rules for management and conservation of biodiversity heritage site. 
Additionally, creation of biodiversity heritage sites may not put any restriction on prevailing practices and usages by local communities other than those decided by them. Moving on to the next news, Ministry of Panchayati Raj launched Smart Gram Panchayat, revolution towards digitization of Gram Panchayat's pilot project. First, let us start by understanding what is the Smart Gram Panchayat project. The Smart Gram Panchayat project aims to extend Prime Minister's Wi-Fi Access Network Interface or PM Vani service in all Gram Panchayats across Begu Sarai district in Bihar. This project is funded under revamped Rashtriya Gram Swaraj Abhiyan implemented by the Ministry of Panchayati Raj. Now, let us understand what is the need to digitize Gram Panchayats. Digitizing Gram Panchayat can help enhance the connectivity and can act as a bridge between the rural-urban divide foster accountability and efficiency in local cell governance. It helps to enhance access to online services in crucial sectors like health, education and skilling, thereby elevating quality of life in rural areas. Lastly, it helps to create employment, enhance disposable incomes of small and medium entrepreneurs and boost the GDP of the country. Moving on, let us talk about the PM Vani scheme. The PM Vani scheme was launched by the Department of Telecommunication in 2020. The scheme aims to enhance proliferation of public Wi-Fi hotspots to create robust digital communications infrastructure in country, especially in the rural areas. The scheme consists of four elements. First is the Public Data Office or PDO. Its work is to establish, maintain and operate PM Vani compliant Wi-Fi hotspots and deliver broadband services to subscribers. Second is the Public Data Office Aggregator. It provides aggregation services like authorization and accounting to the public data offices. Then there is an app provider which develops an app to register users and discover Vani compliant Wi-Fi hotspots for accessing internet service. Lastly, the Central Registry. It maintains details of app providers, PDOAs and PDOs. Currently, it is maintained by the Center for Development of Telematics or CDOT. However, the PM Vani scheme is also facing some concerns. These include The extensive network of public Wi-Fi hotspots is susceptible to security threats. Also, encouraging private sector innovation may lead to an increase in internet prices for users. Lastly, the slowdown in connection speed adds to the concern. Moving on to the next news. Department of Land Resources, Ministry of Rural Development has launched the Land Records Management Initiatives in Assam. Let's start by first discussing about these initiatives. First is the rollout of the National Generic Document Registration System throughout Assam. National Generic Document Registration System is a common, generic application developed for registration departments across countries under One Nation One Software Initiative. Second is the unique land parcel identification number, which is a 14-digit alphanumeric identification number assigned for a land parcel based on geo-coordinates. Lastly, there is blockchain in land records, which was launched on a pilot basis in Darang district of Assam to bring transformation in land records management. If we talk about blockchain, then it is a distributed ledger technology where data and transactions are stored in blocks. Also, blockchain is secured against tampering using cryptographic hash algorithms. Now let's have a look at some issues in land records management in India. First concern is the presumptive land titling that provides evidence of transfer of title but is not a government guaranteed title to property. Next are property related frauds like duplication and tampering of original land documents. There are also some other issues like large numbers of land related litigations double selling of landed property and non-existence of unique record which further adds on to the concerns. Let's now discuss and understand the use of blockchain in land records management. It offers a tamper-proof solution for managing land records by recording and distributing transactions without the ability to edit them. By centralizing land records databases and making them accessible to all relevant departments, tasks like processing subsidy requests or loan approvals become faster and more efficient. Moreover, publicly available blockchain data of property registrations reduces reliance on potentially unreliable personnel or agencies, enhancing the authenticity and reliability of land records verification processes. Moving on to the next news, the Standing Committee on Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution Summit Report on Transforming Fair Price Shops. 
First, let us start by knowing about the FPS or fair price shops. As per the National Food Security Act 2013, fair price shops refers to shops licensed to distribute essential commodities to ration card holders under the Targeted Public Distribution System. Targeted Public Distribution System was launched in 1997 and provides for lower subsidized food prices for below poverty line families than those for above poverty line beneficiaries. The license to fair price shops is issued by an order under Section 3 of Essential Commodities Act or ECA 1955. The ECA provides for regulating control of production, supply distribution and trade of certain commodities in the general public interest. The fair price shops are currently facing some issues such as leakages and diversion of food grains and financial non-viability of FPS. To overcome these issues and transforming fair price shops, few recommendations have been given by the Standing Committee. These include Increasing sales of non-PDS commodities such as Khadi and Ayush products from MSMEs. Committee also recommended to form a monitoring cell to track the progress of model FPS in all states. Also, there is a need to improve the working of vigilance committees established under the National Food Security Act. The vigilance committees are established by the state governments at the state, district, block and FPS levels to ensure transparency and accountability of the functionaries in TPDS. Lastly, ensuring that all EPOS machines are connected to and synchronized with weighing machines for some issue of effective delivery of ration. Various efforts have also been made for transforming fair price shops. These include Common Services Centres or CSC which serves as an access point for the delivery of various B2C and G2C services. Over 43,000 fair price shops have been enabled as CSCs. The mudra loans through the Department of Financial Services have been implemented for capital augmentation and business diversification. Moreover, the TPDS Control Order 2015 allows the sale of non-PDS commodities such as oil, pulses, salt and spices at FPS. The establishment of India Post Payments Bank or the Department of Posts to provide banking financial services and postal services. In this regard, over 3200 FPS have been enabled as banking correspondents. Other efforts include automation of fair price shops, end-to-end -end computerization of TPDS operation and lastly, the One Nation One Ration Card for smooth and transparent function of FPS. Moving on to the next news. Parliamentary Committee has submitted a report on scheme for creation or expansion of food processing and preservation capacities. Scheme for creation or expansion of food processing and preservation capacities was launched in 2017-18. It is one of the components of Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana or PMKSY. PMKSY is an umbrella scheme comprising eight scheme components to give a boost to the growth of food processing sector of the country. Now let's discuss and understand the key features of the scheme. The scheme operating under the Ministry of Food Processing Industries aims to create, expand and modernize food processing units thereby increasing processing levels, value addition and reducing wastage. It provides grants in aid with assistance capped at Rs 5 crore distributed as 35% of project cost in general areas and 50% in difficult areas and for projects of SCST, farmer producers organization and self-help groups. 60% of funds are utilized for units within mega food parks or agro processing clusters and 40% of funds are utilized for units outside these clusters. Implementation is facilitated through various organizations such as central and state PSUs, farmer producers organization, self-help groups and cooperatives. There are also some issues related with the scheme. These include delay in obtaining clearances from the state governments, receipt of a large number of ineligible proposals due to lack of knowledge about the scheme, pending eligible proposals due to non-availability of funds, and under-utilization of funds allocated for scheduled caste sub-plan, tribal sub-plan and northeastern region. The Parliamentary Committee in its recent report has provided some recommendations for the scheme. It suggested engagement of experts or resource persons for providing assistance to probable applicants under the scheme. Also, it directed to improve the planning process and execution mechanism along with additional budgetary allocation to address financial constraints. Lastly, the committee recommended a balanced implementation of the scheme in states or UTs which do not have MFPs or APCs, for example, Jharkhand, Goa, 
पॉन्डिचेरी एंड लद्दाख द प्लेस इन न्यूज फॉर टूडे इज रवांडा विद इट्स कैपिटल केगली It is in the news as according to a UN document the Rwandan army is using sophisticated weapons like surface to air missiles in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Talking about its political features, it is a landlocked country lying south of equator in East Central Africa. It is bounded by Uganda in the north, Tanzania in east, Burundi in south and Democratic Republic of Congo in west. Talking about its geographical features, its highest point is Mount Karisimbi in Virunga range. Its major lakes are Lake Kivu and Muhazi Lake and its major rivers are Akagera, Akanyaru, Mukungwa which flows into the Nile basin and Rubiro, Ruwa and Rusizi which flows into the Congo basin. As we conclude today's main news, let's take a look at some quick updates. Foreign ministers of Germany, Poland and France have met recently to revive the Weimar Triangle. The Weimar Triangle is a regional group which was created in 1991 to develop a shared vision for Europe and forge closer ties between these three countries societies. About 25 crores automated permanent academic account registry or APAR IDs have been created by the Ministry of Education. APAR was introduced in alignment with National Education Policy 2020 and the National Credit and Qualifications Framework. The scheme is a part of the One Nation One Student ID initiative. The center has launched PM Surya Ghar Muft Bijli Yojana, a rooftop solar scheme for free electricity. The scheme aims to light up 1 crore households by providing up to 300 units of free electricity every month, which will further remove cost burden by providing subsidies directly to people's bank accounts as well as providing heavily concessional bank loans. In a significant breakthrough, China's maglev train surpassed its previous record of 623 kilometers per hour. Maglev is a system in which the vehicle runs levitated from the guideway. The system has certain advantages such as it produces no emissions as the lack engine and there is no friction between wheels and rail which enables higher speeds. Chinese scientists have unveiled a novel HPM weapon powered by Stirling engines. Stirling engine is an external combustion engine working on the principle of compression and expansion to convert thermal energy into mechanical energy. High powered microwave or HPM weapons are a type of directed energy weapon or DEU system. DEUs are electromagnetic systems capable of converting chemical or electrical energy to radiated energy and focusing it on a target resulting in physical damage. A strong nor'easter storm has hit the northeast of the United States of America. Nor'easter is a storm along the east coast of North America. It is called so because winds over coastal areas are typically from northeast. During the winters, polar jet stream transports cold arctic air southward across plains of North America and then eastward toward Atlantic Ocean. Nor'easter leads to heavy rain or snow, high speed winds, rough seas and coastal flooding. Assam government has declared kaji nemu as state fruit. This fruit is known for its unique aroma and health benefits and have high rich nutrients content or vitamin C content. This fruit carries geographical indication tag which is an indication used to identify goods having special characteristics originating from a definite geographical territory. Casualties reported during the Hori Habba raises concerns about animal and human safety. Hori Habba which is also known as Hatti Habba is a bull taming rural sport held in Karnataka. Before we go it's time to put your knowledge to test in today's segment of test your learning.
Thank you for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.